Good morning there. My name is uh, Ralph, and I uh, serve with uh, my wife, Renee, and Glenn as part of the uh, missions committee. And so I have the uh, exciting opportunity to introduce to you Larry and Katie Winkles. And uh, so I just wanted to share a little bit about them. Uh, Larry serves as your area associate director. Uh, Larry helps resource and equip developing FM ministries, or Free Methodist ministries within continental Europe. He also serves as secretary of the Hungarian Bread of Life Foundation and uh, also a Budapest mission team leader. And uh, Katie serves as leadership team of the Budapest Fellowship, facilitates uh, women's ministry programs, oversees a weekly English class offered free to the community, and has a ministry of hospitality. And so I think they're going to share about what they do in their free time. But <laughs> so part of uh, the Free Methodist uh, background, uh, you might have thought it was a good deal, and that's why you walked in today. Uh, but it also has to deal with, uh, there's a number of things in that freedom umbrella. But one of those is uh, the set free movement, uh, freedom from slavery. And so it's still an issue today. So it is with honor that I hand the microphone over to Larry. Thank you. We were having so much fun with the kids. We thought my, we might just stay in there. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Oh, it's so good to be here again with you. It's been a couple of years since we've been here. But Ferndale has been a partner for a long time. And it's always, uh, always a privilege to come back and update you a little bit on what the ministry is that you're a part of. But first, I just wanted to give you a peek at our family because part of the thing that we enjoy when we're back uh, for our home visit is to uh, get to see our family. So this was our family at Christmas time, our two sons and their children. And we were together for a few days at Christmas. And yesterday, we happened to be able to go over to little Harvey's birthday party. He just turned four, and uh, it was wonderful to be there for that. Uh, and this summer, as we're traveling around, we are sharing a little bit uh, to go along with the scripture that you had this morning um, from Hebrews. And uh, we're talking about running the race with endurance. Uh, you are have been longtime partners. And uh, that's not a sprint. It's even longer than a marathon. And we thank you for that and want to share a little bit of what that's, what that's like with you this morning. Uh, let's um, just look at the scripture one more time. And uh, you've heard it already. So I just want to focus uh, our attention on, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Uh, fixing our eyes on Jesus, it provides focus and it provides balance and it gives us the ability to persevere. We're in our 25th year of ministry in Hungary, and in case you didn't know, Hungary is in Central Europe. We were at one church one time, and the question and answer time, a person asked, can you tell me exactly what part of South America Hungary is located in? <laughs> well, so we always start with this now, just so that avoid any confusion. Um, Hungary is a small country. It's about the size of Indiana turned sideways. It has a population of less than 10 million people. And today, it's considered to be post-communist, post-modern, and post-Christian. Most Hungarians would identify as being Christian, but the type of Christianity that they understand is a cultural Christianity. If you ask the Hungarian on the street, are you a Christian? The answer would be, of course, yes. If you ask them, how do you know you're a Christian? They say, I'm a Christian because I'm Hungarian. I'm a Christian because I was christened in the church. Do you go to church regularly? No. Do you have a practicing life of faith? No. Uh, we have ministered out of Budapest, Hungary, the capital, a population of about 2 million, beautiful city divided by the River Danube. One side is the Buddha side, the other side is the Pest side. The two cities were joined together in 1873 when the first permanent bridge was built across the Danube. Some of you may know about Budapest as the starting point for a lot of the Danube River cruises. They start in Budapest and either go upstream or they start upstream and come back and end in Budapest. 
and it is a busy city. And this is one of the major intersections that's very close to the ministry center. And there's always people on the street. This is a transportation hub for buses, for the subway, for trolley cars, and of course, lots of automobiles. It's a busy, busy place. And this is our ministry center, the Budapest Ministry Center, which is on a corner in that busy neighborhood. And it is called Kuzhe, which means commonplace, because it's our desire that it would be a place in the neighborhood where people would know that they're welcome to come, no matter who they are, and to build a sense of community within the community there. It's a common space. Everyone is welcome. And this is our Budapest mission team. Uh, Peter Tod is the uh, ordained Hungarian pastor uh, that leads the church ministry there, and his wife, Judith. And they have two children, Sharolta and Marton. Uh, Sharolta is uh, turning 11 very soon, and Marton's birthday will be on Tuesday, and he will be nine. And then Aaron Kingsley, on the other side of the old people, is our colleague, uh, an associate missionary who's been there for two years and uh, has brought lots of energy and enthusiasm from Spring Arbor. And she has just decided to stay for at least one more year. And we're very, very thankful for that. One of the things that we have been doing over the years is trying to raise up Hungarian leaders. Uh, the Free Methodist Church exists in Hungary through our charitable foundation, the Bread of Life Foundation. Uh, registration as a church is increasingly difficult, uh, of any church is difficult in Hungary. Uh, and in fact, in the year 2011, the government canceled the church registration of over 300 uh, church groups. So we exist and operate through our charitable foundation, which does have uh, religious purposes in its charter. And so we have this board, wonderful board of directors, all Hungarian, and I'm in an advisory capacity that we're really thankful for these Hungarian leaders stepping up. Then we have our Hungarian pastors that are also uh, intricately involved with the Set Free movement, the anti-trafficking movement in Hungary as well. So Pastor Peter of the Budapest Church, Pastor uh, Sylvia of the Jura Church, another town in Hungary, and Pastor uh, Zhuzha, who is the Set Free Coordinator and assist in both the Budapest and Jura churches. Zhuzha and Sylvia are conference ministerial candidates very close to uh, being ready for ordination, maybe even as, uh, as soon as uh, this coming November. Uh, these are pictures from our Budapest church and the various activities that we sponsor through the church, the church services, of course, We've recently been experiencing, uh, experimenting once a month with the dinner church concept where we invite people to come and uh, have a, a, a lunch, really, not a dinner, and a short message about Jesus and then conversation around tables and prayer. Uh, you can see Christmas celebrations, uh, food, of course. What church would, be, would church be without food? And many people come to the Sandwich Church, which we have one Sunday a month, that uh, don't come to the regular Sunday service. So it really has been a way to create an open door in the community. And it helps the people in our church to learn how to serve together uh, by preparing the sandwiches and setting up the room and cleaning up afterwards. It gives them an opportunity to learn how to demonstrate love through their service. And so we're really thankful uh, for the opportunity to do that. We also sponsor uh, community programs, some of them that take place at the ministry center and some of them that take place out in the community. Uh, we sponsor uh, game afternoons, table game afternoons um, is one of the things. Pastor Pater leads uh, a once a week uh, preschool a music group for moms and preschoolers where he teaches them Hungarian folk songs. And I go just because it's fun, and I get to know the moms and the kids a little bit. 
Uh, we do excursions into the community, uh, visiting historic places and ex exhibitions. And it gives us an opportunity to get to know people, to build relationships with them, uh, address the rampant loneliness um, that is a part of Hungarian society, and to build trust in their lives, helping to open doors uh, for them to experience what God's love is like and inviting them to come and take part in that. One of our longest running programs is the English Conversation Groups, and that has been running um, since uh, 20, 2020, no, 2001. It started out at a social service agency, and um, then we outgrew that space, and it has since moved to the ministry center. And it is a place where people can come and learn some English. They can learn some English. Um, but more than that, they, they make friends. Uh, we have an opportunity, again, to build trust. And uh, many of the people that are a part of the church fellowship started out as a member of the English class. And another one of the things that we're a part of, as Larry mentioned, is the Set Free uh, Network in Europe. And in Hungary, we have ministries in Budapest and in Jir, which is the city where Pastor Sylvia is the pastor of the church. In Jir, it's at a children's, state children's home. And next week, this coming week, actually starting tomorrow, is going to be the vacation Bible school there with the children. And Pastor Peter and Aaron and Peter's wife, Judith and Sylvia, and a number of volunteers uh, will be a part of that program. So we ask you to pray for that program, for the volunteers, and for the children uh, that will be a part of it. And maybe a break in the weather would help because it's supposed to be in the 90s. So we would appreciate your prayer for that next week. In Budapest, uh, we have a partnership with the Salvation Army, and they, are, they run a number of shelters in Budapest. Uh, one of them is for women and children, and these are uh, mothers that have come from violent or um, situations or dangerous situations or off the street, unable to provide for their families. And they're taken in and given an opportunity to get their feet on the ground. They're given help in finding work, in counsel, and support. Uh, it's also a part of the human trafficking prevention work that we do there because we're sharing with them and with the children uh, information that can help them know how valuable and loved that they are, that they're precious, and how to recognize and resist the offers that might lead to trans, uh, human trafficking. One of my roles is the, as the Europe Area Associate Director, which means I'm involved with the work of the Free Methodist Church across Europe. Uh, <clears throat> I'm on the operations team of the European Freedom Network, which coordinates uh, anti-trafficking uh, ministries through all of the partner organizations that are working in the various countries of Europe. Uh, we're part uh, working, I'm involved with the African European Church Network. I did training with them for them uh, earlier this year, uh, which is represents free Methodist churches that have uh, pastors and congregations that are tied back to African nations. Uh, we have Ghanaian churches in Malta. We have Burundian churches in, I mean, Gwandan churches in Brussels. We have Congolese churches in Sweden. So uh, it's really exciting uh, that these churches are really having a, an impact and making a difference in their countries. We're involved with the exponential movement. Some of you may have heard of the exponential here in the United States. There's now Exponential Europe, and we're involved with their trainings as well, and other, other ministries and things that I'm involved with. In the past several years, I've been the principal uh, administrator of the Bishop's Crisis Response Funds that have used the funds that have been donated by Free Methodist congregations in the US and Canada to help provide relief to refugees outside of Ukraine and relief 
down to the conflict area and relief in the northern parts of Ukraine for internally displaced persons. And regardless of your opinion about the war, uh, we have been responding to people in need. And so that's what we focus on, the needs of individuals, families, mothers, children, uh, widows who've lost their uh, husbands or in the war or others that have lost families in the war as well. Well, as we may have mentioned, uh, we're in our 25th year of ministry in Hungary. This is a sampling of our prayer cards from over the years. Where did those old people come from? We looked in the mirror one day and there they were. Uh, and uh, what this means is that we're approaching our retirement. And so uh, the theme that we have for this part of our uh, message is we're working on passing on the baton. Right, so what's next? What's next? We're passing on the baton. We're not giving up. We're not losing heart. We're just passing on the baton to those people that we have been mentoring and working with over the past 25 years. And we're retiring from ministry in Europe, but we're not retiring from ministry in the church. Uh, our retirement home will be in Spring Arbor. And this is sort of our retirement timeline. Our official retirement date will be February 1st of next year. We return to Hungary in September. And in that period, that transition period, we'll be continuing the work that we've already begun of transferring responsibilities and making necessary legal changes and things like that. And one of the reasons that we've shown you, uh, the board of directors for the foundation and the pastors uh, that are there and the ministerial candidates is, we think that things are going to be left in good hands. And we've been investing in the lives of these people for a number of years, and we'll continue to support them in a, more of a consultancy role in the future. So during this transition period from September to January, uh, your support for us through our Winkles Missionary Support Account using the code MSA is really important. And then support also for the Hungry uh, uh, Church Planning and Development Fund is important. But what we're asking partner churches to consider is that from February of next year, if you were supporting, if you were supporting our MSA, we really would like to encourage you to transfer your support to support the Hungarian leaders that we have just shown you through the Hungary CPD. We will be continuing an association with the mission under what they're calling now U.S. Partners. And in that role, we will continue to do mentoring and consult, consult, consultancy uh, for our colleagues, not only in Hungary, but also across Europe and then also advocacy for Hungary and for Europe here in the United States. And as we do that, we would just ask you to be in prayer. Prayer is the most important thing. And you can sign up for the Budapest Prayer Letter if you're not already receiving it at our table, and that will continue uh, even after we're not there. And we would invite you to pray for a movement of the Holy Spirit right now for our transition from full-time ministry in retirement, for the current Hungarian leaders as they take on new or expanded ministry responsibilities. Uh, this summer, Pastor Pater has been managing everything at the office and the church, and guess what? All the computers need to be replaced, and he's going, <laughs> right? So just stuff like that that has to take place. Yes, he called me this week. They did a system update on one of the computers and lost everything. You know, so it's things like that, that they just need prayer for us. They learn how to manage them. Wisdom and discernment for the ministry leaders and for the congregants in the Budapest Church Fellowship and the Jura Church Fellowship to become involved at ministry at every level, that they will continue to find ways to serve in love. And the end of the war in Ukraine. We'd ask you to pray for those and invite you to remain supportive. Ferndale has been very supportive. Informed, let us know what you need to, what information you need, please. We want to help you with that. Connect with us 
and continue to be committed to the ongoing ministries in Hungary. Then, if that's not enough, we'd invite you to go, okay? If you're interested in having first face-to-face -face, uh, encounters in Hungary, let us know. And we can help you make those connections and you have an opportunity to serve alongside of our Hungary leaders. We'd love to help you with that as well. And we've uh, given uh, Pastor Rob uh, a couple of documents that detail in more detail are the retirement plan and how ongoing support uh, for Hungary will resource some of the people that we showed you already this morning. Another opportunity, uh, if you have uh, the interest, and uh, is the vision trip, the Europe vision trip, which is going to take place, place next year from April 22nd to May 3rd. We have these uh, informational cards out there on the table. Uh, it's not going directly to Hungary. It's going to start in Spain to learn about the Spanish ministries, and it's going to move to uh, Bulgaria to learn about the Bulgarian ministries, and then it's going to end in Greece to learn about the Grecian ministries that are the Free Methodist take it, Church is undertaking. But in each of those locations, representatives from ministries in other countries will be there. So in one of those locations, Pastor Zhuja will be at one of those other locations to talk about the ministries in Hungary. Our leaders from Belgium and the Scandinavian countries will be at one of those locations as well to introduce uh, the Free Methodist work in those countries. And Zhuja speaks excellent English. So you can ask all your questions. <laughs> yeah, as we close, let's focus again. Let's focus again on Jesus, the author of our faith, and read this part of the scripture together. Let, Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Thank you for your partnership in ministry and for the opportunity to share a little bit with you this morning. And of course, after our retirement, we'll just be located in Spring Arbor. And if there's any way that we can help resource you, we'd be happy to come and do that. You can pick up prayer cards and more information at the table. And we'd love to get to know you.